Hello? Can you confirm you can see my screen? Um, not yet, okay. not yet. You still can't see it. Okay, let me stop and reshare. Hold on. Okay. Can you confirm if you can see it now? Uh, good, good, yes. Smart girl, I can. All right. Yes, so, um, good afternoon, everyone. Or, oh, are we in the evening already? Yes, so, um, just like David said, um, we are going to be working for a few weeks. Um, so this is going to be a series and we are going to be working on you know, developing um, an end-to-end -end solution, right? So that we are working on something that everybody can relate to, can you know, try out something, you know, even within your organization and all that, right? So uh, this particular series, we are going to be working on um, an expense requests application, right? So the aim is, um, of course, you know, every in every organization, we have um, times where you need to request for, you know, a particular uh, amount, maybe for official purposes, and it could be a case where you need to maybe request in advance or maybe after you already you know, spend the money and you need to get a refund and all of that, right? So, um, you know, the manual process would be you want to request for cash, maybe you need to fill a form, submit it to your, um, the finance team or your manager needs to, you know, approve it and all of that. And of course, once it's approved, Maybe you also need to go to the finance team who then also approves. And after it's been approved, then you, know, you get the cash and all of that. So, uh, which is you know, the manual process. So all of this, we are trying to make it digital, trying to automate it, right? So the essence uh, of this um, training now is to you know, see how we can bring the different Power Platform solution uh, power platform applications together you know, to now develop an end-to-end -end solution. So applications we'll be using in this case will include um, power apps, of course. So with power apps, um, I'm sure most of us are probably already familiar with some of these uh, applications already, but for the sake of people who might not be very familiar, I know we've had sessions you know, in the past that I, I don't want to start um, going over everything from the scratch again because of time. So that's why I didn't. So what's, uh, so for Power Apps, of course, Power Apps is just a local application uh, that allows you to you know, develop business applications you know, without, um, with little or no code. And the application can work on both your um, PC and your mobile phone, right? So. We are going to be using uh, Power Apps to develop the application whereby what that, that's what the, uh, the users will be feeling you know, when they go to the, um, of course, they need, the users need to have an interface where they will fill a form and all of that and submit. So Power Apps will be doing that. We're also be going to be using um, SharePoint, right? So SharePoint, of course, is where our data will be stored. So this, uh, of course, when you are filling a form, just like when you go to any website and you are asked to fill a form, of course, every other information you are filling, like your name, your email, and everything, of course, is submitted somewhere, right? There is a particular database where 
all of this information will be stored. So which is what we are going to be achieving with this uh, SharePoint as well. So we are going to be using a SharePoint list, which will be our data source. This is where we are going to be submitting information to and also you know, picking all our information from, right? Um, then we are going to also be using Power Automate. So with Power Automate, that's what we'll be using to automate you know, the entire process from beginning to the end. So which means when I submit a form, just like when you go to, when you fill a form online, maybe you are registering for a particular uh, event or something, immediately you register, I'm sure you get an acknowledgement mail to confirm that yes, your uh, request has been submitted and all that, right? So that's what Power Automate will be doing for us. So when I submit a request, there needs to be a notification that goes to my manager to approve another notification after my manager has approved or rejected comes to me to tell me that my request has been either approved or rejected as the case may be or um, after it has been approved by a manager it probably goes to the finance team and the finance uh, team also gets a notification that yes this person uh, requested for okay mr hey requested for this amount and it has been approved by mr b who is is our manager so kindly treat this right and they can go ahead to treat and um once they treat that then you also get notified to say okay your request has been treated has been approved maybe the amount will be paid into your account and all of that right so everything will be processed so that's basically what we are going to be doing we are also going to be using um, Power BI eventually. So when we have our app ready, we have all the data coming into our SharePoint list. We we'll also have someone to take us on uh, using Power BI to now connect to this um, data source. So this data source is where um, all the information goes to, right? So uh, the Power BI goes to that data source and picks all this information and you know displays it to us graphically. So, okay, I want to see the amount people have requested for in the organization for this month or this week or since inception, right? So management are you know mostly interested in stuff like that, where they want to see how much is coming in, how much is going out, right? They want to, you know, be able because. Of course, nobody wants to go to your data where it's stored. You can imagine having a, a SharePoint this one, an Excel sheet that has thousands of rows, and you now have to start looking one after the other to start doing calculation and all of that. Nobody has that time, right? So with Power BI, you can you know see all of this information like in a 360-degree view, you know, at, at a glance, and you can you know. This will inform your decision making and say, okay, I think people are requesting for money for this particular purpose the most and you know, all of that. So that's what we are going to be doing. Um, so this, like I mentioned, will probably take us a few weeks. So I hope everyone can see me. I hope I'm not talking to myself. Okay. Yes, we can. Okay. All right, thank you. Yes, I don't know if anybody has any questions so far with the explanation I've given. Hi, um, thank you. Good I don't know if you can right. uh, turn a bit uh, to the basics because there's a newbie. Uh, I'm a newbie on the on the um, on the power platform. Oh, so okay, I don't know. Just a bit. I'm not saying to some extent, so at least oh, to okay, okay. Just, uh, to follow you up on some certain things. Thank you, I appreciate it. All right, all right. Yeah, so, okay, so let me just take like two minutes to also go over you know, some of the basic things, which you know, I already explained most of them already, right? So basically, like I mentioned, the tools we are going to be using, so the Power Platform tools are four, Power Apps, Power Automate, uh, Power BI and Power Virtual Agents, right? So the four of them have different functions, 
but you know you can also combine them to build you know a wonderful solution so what we are trying to do here is to build an application automate a business process right this is something that uh organizations do daily people request for expense it could be a leave request you know people go on leave it could be any any kind of process that you know as um a step-by-step -step action that you take right so what we are now trying to do is to build an application for this right whereby people go to the application fill the form and you know submit the form and it gets approved like i mentioned so power apps basically is what we are going to be using to build the app right as time goes on you see how all of this works so perhaps is is a low code application you know unlike when you want to build an application and you, you need to write a whole lot of uh, code using javascript using c sharp and co you know with perhaps you don't even need to have any knowledge of coding but you will all see that you can still build awesome applications you know even with within a shorter period of time right so that that's what basically perhaps does Power Automate, of course, also helps you automate your business processes. So like I mentioned, of course, everybody needs to get notified at one point or the other. Once I submit this, this person should get an email. So just like a workflow um, engine that tells you, so it would have been designed such that in, in such a way that it will follow your business rules to say, when I do this, this is what should happen. When this happens, this is what should happen next. Right, so that's what Power Automate does, and also uh, a low code, no code platform, which means you don't also need to write code. If you are going to do that with, you know, uh, a normal programming language like C Sharp or, or the rest that do use for backend, of course, it will take a whole lot of time and it will take some level of expertise to achieve that. But with Power Automate, you will see how you can do that, you know, within a shorter period of time, even without having any prior coding knowledge, right? Then um, Power BI is also a data analytics tool um, that we are also going to be using at the end of the day. So it allows, it connects to your data and displays it in uh, a graphical format, you know, a visually appealing way, right? That um, you can, it allows you to quickly uh, get insights into your data. So you are also going to be seeing that very soon. Then power virtual agent is just like your, you know, your chatbot. I'm sure you've gone to sites where you have, um, maybe you just see something come up by your bottom right that asks you, hello, how are you? How can we help you? And maybe you reply to it. It's giving you response. You know, most times it's not uh, a human that is responding to you, right? It could just be a, um, it could be a chatbot that has been programmed based on certain, um questions and answers that has been programmed to it so that's what power virtual agent helps you do so you can build a chatbot with it as well so hopefully we'll also be exploring the power virtual agents in the course of this so as time goes on we'll see so then um like i mentioned sharepoint also has you know different uses it could serve as, it could serve as a document management system and the likes right but the aspect we are going to be focusing on for this is um, the SharePoint list. So the SharePoint list is you know, very similar to an Excel sheet where you have your set of rows and columns where you, know, you can fill in different information and all that, right? So we are also going to be, so which means every data we are filling when you submit that, okay, I'm requesting for this amount and all of that. So all of that information will now be stored on our SharePoint list so we can always go back to that so that would be more like our database so um but as time goes on I, I believe most of this will be clearer i hope i that makes sense okay i'll take that as a yes okay so um the first thing we want to do here is to set up our data source. And like I mentioned, our data source in this case will be a SharePoint list. So of course, there are other data sources you could use. It could be uh, an SQL server. It could even be an Excel sheet. It could be you know, a Dataverse and, and the likes, right? But in this case, we are just going to be using um, a SharePoint list. 
So um, starting from your SharePoint sites, so let's say, let me go back to the screen. So this is like an home page of a particular SharePoint site. So what I want to do here is to create a new list so I can go to my site content. Um, then I click on this new and I select new list. So I'm going to be creating a new blank list. And we can see that there are also a few templates that exist already. So let's say you want to create a travel request. You see that this will come with certain predefined columns that relates to travel requests, right? So I can create from a blank, I can create a blank list. I can create from an Excel sheet. If I have an Excel sheet that's, you know, um, already has a, a table that has uh, a few columns and rows, and I just want to import that data from the Excel to my SharePoint list, I could also do that. An existing list could also be, I already have an existing list, maybe on, an, on a different site. And I want to just use it rather than having to start from scratch, creating all the columns that I need. I could just create from that existing list and it will come with all those columns from the other list. So that's what, so, but in this case, we are going to be creating a blank list. So we'll call it expense requests. So feel free to stop me at any time if there is anything that is not clear. I'll be willing to answer. Yes, so point list. Um, it comes with this default title column, right? So of course, you could also rename it to something else if you don't need a title. Um, then you can add different uh, other columns. So based on the type of application you are creating, what are the types of columns you are going to be needing, right? So say you are creating a leave request list, for example, you know that you need to know the, the dates the person is going on the leave, the day the person is coming back, you need the name of the person going on the leave, right? So a lot of information that you're going to be needing will determine how many columns and what column type you are going to select on your SharePoint, right? So uh, we have different data types or column types here. So for example, single line of text is, okay, if the data I'm expecting in that column or the field is a single line, that is, I just need to type a few words. So I think this can take up to like 255 characters, I think. Um, then multi-line could allow much more fields. So let's say it's a description that could take a whole lot of lines or and all that. So you could, you might want to switch to multi-line. The location will allow you to pick a particular location, like say Lagos, Nigeria, and all that. The number will be, of course, the number field where um, I'm expecting a number. So let's say I need to get the age of someone. Of course, I know somebody cannot be um, X, Y years old, right? So it's definitely going to be a number, either 5, 10, 20. So I'll know that. So that to, so the reason we are also going to be uh, selecting specific data types is to allow some, uh, I mean, avoid some kind of errors and redundancy in our data, right? So if I, so I, of course, I could also select a single line of text for age, but that would mean I'm allowing the users to enter um, information that are no numbers. So someone can come in and enter x80 right so when eventually like i mentioned we are going to be using power bi for this data analysis right when i'm trying to now analyze my data at the end of the day i don't have the right analysis because he's expecting age to be a number right and somebody else has put xyz right so in that case i'll be having some kind of errors and my data would not you know be, be really valid. So in that case, I need to be sure of what type of data I'm expecting, and then I can know which data type I'm choosing. So number as number, then yes or no is if I'm expecting um, 
a, a yes or no answer, right? So, which means in the case where I am expecting, um, let's say, for example, are you a Nigerian, right? So let's say yes or no. So it's either you are a Nigerian or you are not. So I could select a yes or no. Then for person, so person um, is a field that allows you to pick from um, a user within your tenant, right? So this is an Office 365 account and there are people, users that are within this particular um, tenant, right? So I want to pick, I want to pick specifically for people within my tenant, then I'll have to select the person field. So with that, I can search for name of anybody within my organization and select that person's name rather than having to type it. So of course, I could also still select single line of text, but like I said, that would allow for error in my data because in that case, I could then select, um, let's say I want to type David Abu, for example. Of course, intentionally or unintentionally, I could type something else, right? I might, maybe I, I misplaced the spellings or something like that. So if I need to now analyze my data at the end of the day, and I want to know how many times David Abu had filled the form or submitted an expense request, you know, it will only capture the times that the name was spelled correctly. So if I had spelled it wrongly at a point in time, it will be seeing that data as a different name entirely, right? So which is why this person field is also good when you are using, when you need to pick a name of you know, somebody within your um, organization. Then date and time, of course, is, um, let's say I need to pick the a particular uh, date. So for example, like this expense, now we are going to be having a column to say, this was the date I spent the money or something like that. Or maybe um, the date I requested for this expense or something like that. So the date and time could allow you to select either only date or a date and time. Then a choice field would allow you to have uh, different options, right? So choice will have um, different options whereby you can select, just like when you go to a, a, uh, a website or something and you, and you see the list of drop downs, right? So you have, maybe you, you are, yes, yeah, so when, when you are filling your phone, you have um, your, to select your country, right? You see that we have a whole lot of countries on the list and you can just select Nigeria from that drop down. So if you have some set of options that you are, are, are expecting the users to fill in, so choice could just be what you need to use in that case. So you just define all the different options, which you now show as the drop down on the app for the users. Yeah, hyperlink, of course, is when you need to put the URL. Then currency, maybe you are trying to use an amount or something like that. Then, of course, image. Image two is when you are trying to put an, uh, you are expecting an image in that particular column. So there are a few other ones, like, like look up and the likes, but I want to put out with that. But I think as time goes on, we might have some need for that as well. So I don't know if I have any questions at this point so far. Not for me, not for me, yeah. All right, thank you. Yes, so, um, we are requesting for cash. Um, there are certain information you are going to be filling right? So let's say you need to fill a form to request for cash within your organization, right? There needs to be some fields you are going to fill in. So I would like to get uh, feedback on, you know, what are the fields we think we need to create? So let's say you are the one that was asked to build this app, for example. You need to think like, so we need to start thinking like a developer at this point. So you need to think of, okay, what are the info? So it doesn't, you don't have to get everything correctly at this stage. So most of the time, from personal experience, when I'm creating an app like this, I don't have all my columns ready. 
So I'll put all the important ones I can remember. And as time goes on, maybe there are additional features that needed to be added on the app at every point in time. I can always come back here and add the different columns that I need and go back to my app and update, right? But it's important we, you know, have, or at least have those very important ones ready, right? So that we can, you know, start building our app. Because if you are building your app, of course, if you need to submit data, the data needs to come somewhere, right? So, which is why it's important. So, when we are talking about expense requests, what are the kind of information we think we are going to be needing? So I'd like to get our feedback. Um, name. Okay, good. Customer name. So, okay. Mm. Customer name. Okay, yeah. So yes, depending on um, what type of um, expense it, it is. So let's say if our use case was um for okay so we could also have customer name actually so let's say you are requesting on behalf of because you know when you are building an app with power apps especially it's um it's accessible it's accessible to people within your organization alone right so which means you can't share with external users even if you share with any external user, that means they need to have an account within your tenant so if we want to use a customer name, which means, of course, there needs to be somebody internally who is going to make that request on behalf of that customer. So let's say you have a vendor whereby uh, maybe the person did some work for you, the company, and you need to pay the person. I want to uh, request for the expense on behalf of the person. So that means there needs to be somebody internally who will um, kind of make that request on behalf of the customer so then you can have the customer name you know in that case right so let's let's start with employee name so the employee name will be the name of the person who is actually making this request right so let's say we have david who wants to make the request on behalf of company abc right so we need to first know who is actually making you know, this request so let's say we have employee name and we select that as a person or group, which means uh, David can actually go and search for his name or select his name. Or uh, we could also build an app so that it, it even automatically picks David's name once David is logged into the app. So he doesn't have to manually type in his, his or her name, right? So we have employee name. So let's say we also have customer name. So maybe for requests that are uh, vendor related. So for customer name now, we could have that as a single line of text, right? Okay. So let's say we also have um, the expense type. The purpose. Okay, thanks. So yes, the purpose. So which which could also be this expense type, which means uh, so like David mentioned customer name, right? So if it's a vendor type of expense, whereby it's, it's a payment for a vendor, you could have that as part of your options. If it's for transportation, for feeding, accommodation, and you know all of those ones can now you know, be in your option for expense type. So I don't know if we have other suggestions. So I have transportation. I'd like to also get our suggestions on other expense types. Accommodation. Accommodation, yes. A flight. Flight. I think that should be covered with transportation. Transport, yes. yes. Mm. What about feeding? Data. Okay. Maybe data uh, or data mobile or something. Data, uh, something data, data is communication. 
okay, maybe communication. So that will cover for maybe data and mobile phone expenses. Okay. Uh, maybe off, off station allowance. Off station allowance. Okay. Yes, off station allowance. I like that one. <laughs> I long time. When, when, when will I, oh, yeah, I like getting <laughs> off station allowance. Here. I want to be getting off station allowance. So you could come and cut so for me. Okay. So okay. So let, we can just skip this for now. Of course, as time goes on, we can always come back to add more choices here. Okay. So I think one important one we've not even added is the amount right so the amount and the date, the, date of transaction yes thank you so please currency have type the date currency type please how about invoice number the currency yeah the amount is not there okay amount in fact So let's say we also have currency. We have to know if it's Naira, dollars, Euro. The dates of transaction. I want to. I want to be spending ego as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, we have not traveled out of Nigeria. Who have traveled? Come and be telling us the different currencies. Though. Okay, so let's say we have that. We can also, of course, always update that at the end of the day. It's this of so transaction. Date, yes, thanks. So in that case, hello. Sorry, if I want to have other currency so that they can specify, is it possible? Sorry. I said if I want to have other currency so that they can now specify the type of currency, is it possible? Hello, Sunday, are you there? Did you get my question? I, I think it's network. Oh, I think okay. it's network. Let's just wait a little. I heard DG. Um, good evening. Yes. Good evening. How are you? I'm fine. Um, I, he, he just cut off now, so it means it's his network. He has gone off, so it means his okay, network. No, no problem. Yeah. No problem. So uh, as he's coming back in, um, I, I'm happy we are kind of contributing. So the whole idea is that all of us we are building the hub till the end. So it might take us like four Saturdays to build it, but you will know the beginning to the end. And that, that, that is why we're doing it a step at a time. So that even during the week, you can just go back and um, and do your own um, research. Baba Tunde, are you back? Baba Tunde. OK, so I think we're still waiting for him. Hello? Uh, yeah, Baba Tunde. OK, good. Yeah. Baba Tunde. I think somebody was asking a question. Yeah, so I heard yeah. you was asking that is there a way that we can um that we can specify have list of currency and they can specify uh, which one? Yes, I think that was what we just did, right? By having this currency column. No, what he's saying is, can we have orders? Okay. You know, we have oh, a list of okay, three okay. currencies. So is it possible to have maybe? Orders and then people can input uh, another option. Okay, good question. Good question. Good question. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Okay, so let's put orders. So when we get to our app, we'll see how we can have our socket. So for now, let's put orders. So that is also very much possible. Yes, so uh, okay. Order to create for dates. Okay. 
Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, in addition to that, are we planning for any conversion maybe from Nera to, I mean, maybe from dollar or euro to Nera so the organization can pay the money in Nera? Are we planning that as well? Okay. So well. we need a conversion table for that as well. So once you put also amount, if it is $20, then we have a, another uh, field getting the actual error. And then we need to plan for how we'll be updating, you know, the exchange rate as well, if we are planning for that. Okay, that's that's also a very good suggestion, right? Though the initial plan does not cover that, but I think we can also bring that into, I, I believe we will also learn from know how to achieve that as well together so thanks for that uh, yeah so um is there any other thing i'm missing okay so let's also have the manager name because i mentioned that um the manager would be the one approving this right so the manager um so once you fill it in it goes to your manager to you know, approve or reject so let's say we also have the manager name. Um, is there any other thing that we think we need? So what about there... voice number? Sorry? What voice number? Okay. Okay, so let's call that requests ID. So Okay, yes, let's call that request ID. So, because it might not necessarily be maybe something that has invoice. So, let's say you have, um, you are requesting for maybe a refund for a transport or a trip you are going on or you went on or you are going on, right? So, you might not necessarily have the um, invoice number. So, for the help, let's call it request ID so that we can uniquely track um, each request to say, uh, so if I made 10 requests, I can easily track each of them with their, because they will have, all have unique IDs, right? So I can easily track that this was the request I made for uh, last week for transport, or this is the one I made for feeding this week. So thanks for that as well. Um, okay, so I think with this, we are kind of good for now. Well, as time goes on, yes, I'm, I'm very certain that there are other columns that we are going to be creating, but if I start now, some of them might not really make sense. So as time goes on, we will now see the need to have those other columns and we'll always come back to these our lists, which is our database to you know, always add additional columns. So um, now we'll go to our app. I know we have just very few more minutes. We have just five minutes now. I don't know if we should go to our app or... We can just take other questions and answer from here. Please just go to our app. Sorry? Let's go to our app. We started a bit late. Okay, 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 okay. thanks. All right, so to start with your app, you go to uh, make.powers.com, which brings you here. And from here, you can see different options like um, starting from a data, which is a SharePoint. You can create your app from blank, model driven app, portal. And you also have a bit, uh, some templates here that already exist. Now you can check out how some of those templates were built and can also modify them to your taste and all that. So, but here we want to create a new app, right? So let's call this a new Canvas app actually. So our new Canvas app is um, what is going to, what the, uh, the app that people will actually be going into. So, you know, the manual process, means that you need to have a form that you fill. You say, I, my name, okay, you fill in your name, you fill in 
in the amounts you are requesting for, you fill in the reason or the expense type, you fill in the um, all the other information that we have you know, mentioned. So then maybe you now take it to your manager, your manager signs it to say, okay, I've approved it. And after he has approved, it goes to design the documents to maybe the finance team. Then the finance team goes to uh, convert it and make the payment to your account and all that, right? So that's the manual process. So, which means if we are also making this digital, there needs to be a starting point, which is the form, right? So, which is which means we need to have a form where you are going to fill in all the information, which will now be the starting point. Then from there, it now goes to other people who need to you know, carry out the approval and all that. Network. Tunde, we have somebody's hand up. Oh, okay, sorry. We have a question for please, from Olanike. Olanike, please go ahead. All right. My question is: Is the only Canvas app that we can use for this flow? We pay mm. this app. No. But in this our scenario, we are going to be using Canvas apps. Oh, you could also use. Um, a model driven app with for this to uh, to achieve this. I don't know if that answers your question. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. All right. Yes. So when you are creating your app as well, you need to select you know which um. Which orientation you want? Is it a phone layout or tablet layout? So the phone layout is you have it. Um, yeah, hello. Okay, sorry, you just mentioned that for this um, scenario we can use a modern driven app to achieve the same thing. So what then informs the decision of using a Canvas app? Why then are we not considering a modern driven? Okay. Thanks. Yes, yeah, so um well for this our scenario right model driven app is actually um it's actually easier to work with especially for um starters right model driven app could be a little complicated to use right then um model driven app could also inf uh, uh, involve you using um like a common data service and, and co which are premium connectors but in this case so so which means if you if you want to use an account within your organization to you know work with this it might also require some additional licenses or additional payments right but with using uh, sharepoint as our data source we really don't need to uh, pay anything extra so your normal office three size uh, subscription already covers for that. Then Canvas app are also very um, simpler to learn and work with than model driven app. So especially for people who are just starting, it's always easier to start with um, a Canvas app. I hope that makes some sense. Very well, thank you. All right, thanks. So we can decide to use a phone layout or tablet layout. So a phone layout means it will um, show in form of like on your mobile phone, the way it, it is like you have a portrait view, right? While a tablet layout will be a landscape view. So whichever one we decide to use. So I'd like us to decide which one we think we should go with. Mm, let's use mobile. Okay. I, I think we should use mobile experience. All right. I also think so too. So with mobile phone means people can just easily go from their mobile and you know, go ahead and fill in the form at any point in time. Uh, 
Yeah, so mobile, uh, so of course, both in mobile or a phone layout or a tablet layout, of course, both can still work on your mobile phone. And that's one interesting part of power apps as well. When you are working with power apps, it build works on both your. Sorry, I'm um, I can't. Okay, so I was saying. An interesting part of Power Apps is that when you build an app with Power Apps, it automatically works on both your PC and on your mobile phone. Unlike when you are building an app with a custom code, you need to probably get a, a web developer who would do web application for you. Different mobile developer, uh, develop that of the mobile app, right? But with um, Power Apps, one uh, the app you are building works on both platform straight up, right? So this works on both your PC and your mobile phone. So that's another interesting part of it. Yes. So we have our interface. This is our Power App Studio for people who are probably seeing this for the first time. So this is um. The power to the where we have so this is very similar to so I used to say something that when if you can use um PowerPoint and Excel, then you can most likely build an app with power apps, right? So you can see that this interface is similar to when you are designing something on your PowerPoint or Word or Excel, where you can insert different icons, insert the text and all that, right? So which is all of the things we have here. So this is just a blank screen if I preview this. So we can see that this is just a blank screen that, yes, as a designer or as the developer, you now have to start building everything you want to design on, right? So a lot of different controls. So all we have here are different controls, right? So we have labels. Labels are just like for text. So this these are not editable. You just want to show a particular um information with that label right so that's what labels are used for we have buttons of course like when you want to um when you are working with an app and you you, click, you need to click on the button to perform actions so we have buttons we have text my network is pretty bad follow this for that so we also have um yeah so we can see this label so I can just easily go here and change the text. Expense request, right? You can see that, and I can drag it and drop it anywhere I want on the screen. I can come here and change the font size, change the font type to bold, change the color of the fonts, you know, centralize it, or align it right, and all that. So all of that. You can see that just by clicking here, I'm already designing my app. So if I was going to, you know, do write a code to achieve this, let's say HTML, CSS, I'm sure it take me more time. Rather than just inserting and dragging and dropping and changing all of this, I'll probably need to start figuring out how to write my CSS and putting a line, center, and all of that, right? I think somebody's hand is raised. Olani K. Yeah, sorry. I just want to ask a question. The country um it starts from the list instead of start copying from start typing all this. Country extract from the SharePoint list. Okay, okay, good. So we are actually going to do that. So we've not connected to our data source yet, but we are going to do that. So what we are just doing here is, you know, when you are, when you have an app, you probably need to have an own page where you now click on maybe login or something that now takes you to the form, and then you can now submit your form. So this is more like an home page, basically that we are trying to design. So this part um, is we can have like, like a, a picture on this screen that just shows you like welcome and all of that. You understand? So this is not this is not even connecting to our data yet. So when we get to the points where we now need to 
uh, put the form that will be submitting back to our list, you see that we can now simply insert the form and put all the information that we want without um, without having to Thank manually you. type them in. Okay. Yes, so it's okay. automatically pull all the columns that we already created from our SharePoint list. Okay. Awesome. Right. Yes. So here, of course, we can insert different, so we can see different controls that we have, text, text input. So text input is uh, when you need um, a text box where people, so you know, this particular one we inserted was just a label to just show maybe the title of the app. We can have a text input where people need to enter a specific information, right? So if you are designing an app that requires people to put in a certain information, you can, you know, insert that. Uh, you can use a text box for that. You also have different icons. You have a date picker if you need to put, um, if what the, what the, the user needs to enter is a date. Why is it showing this way? I'm not sure why this is showing this way. Right, you could also have a pen input. So this is not supposed to be showing this way, but yeah, so you can see a text input allows me to enter any text that I want, right? So there are a lot of other um, things that we have, but as time goes on, we'll also, you know, explore different other ones. So you can see button, we have a drop down, combo box, a date picker, radio button uh, and you know the likes so we we'll also see how some of that works um as time goes on so um yes so what i want to also do here is maybe put an uh, an image to depict the type of app we are building i'm sorry i'm a very bad designer actually so you'd have to to bear with me. People who are better designers can, you know, can always design something that is much more better, but I hope you just grab the concept at least. Yeah, so we can have an image from here. Of course, we can even change the background color from white and, you know, just design it to look as cool as the apps, you know, we've, we are all familiar with or we all work with, right? Apologies, my network seems to be pretty bad. Okay, so you can just start the image, change the size. If I was writing, I know how much to even align the text center or increase the image and all that. But the dragon and drop, I can do that. So I can even go back to change. You know, the color of my screen. So there are different properties that we have at the top here, right? So I can go to change this from let me change this to this to gray. So you can see that the color already changed just by you know selecting a background color, right? So yes. Let's say we then have a button to please let me know what time we are ending so I can know how to round up. Okay, so yeah, maybe like 515. So we can just get a reasonable point around then and, and maybe we're after we pull in the data so everybody yes. can relate to what you explained. All right, all right. This, this is very slow. My network seems to be it's not always like this, but in my network that is causing this guy. This is not supposed to be showing this one. Uh, okay, so let me just so yeah, so one important thing again when you are creating your app from blank is that always remember to save your app so if i work this and i work on my app though the app automatically saves but that would be after you have saved it the first time so it's important that you try as much as possible to first save your app 
so that subsequently at least if you forget to save it you know auto save i think every five minutes or thereabouts so let's call this expense quest application okay and i save so once that is saved, then I can always um, go back to it because if I don't save this, then I won't even see this application at the end of the day at all. Even if I've you know, created all the screens and everything. So if I don't save it for the first time, so always remember to do that. Yes, so I think I might need to close and open this up again because this is not supposed to be showing this way. So just a minute. So I think one thing I just, one last thing I want us to just do is to now see how we can bring in, you know, we are actually created, um, so we can see that I now see that app on my list here. So I can edit this again. So one last thing I want us to quickly do is to bring in our, our data source to the app. So currently, even though we have built, we've created our SharePoint list, and we've also created our hub here. There is no connection between them yet. So, which means if I want to, you know, build my data and I want to fill the form and submit, there is no way this is going to even submit. Yeah. So, I think this is showing fine now. So, there is no way this is going to submit to your list because there is no connection between this app and that list yet. So, what we need to first do is to pull in our data source. So, on this left hand side, if we see here, so we can see the tree view, this data. Once you select this data and you click on add data, so we can see different uh, data sources that we can connect. So these are uh, common data service or data base as it's called now. And we can see different connectors. So uh, power, power Automate, Power Platform generally can connect to you know, several data sources whether within Office 365 or even outside of Office 365. So we can see that even this Adobe Creative Cloud, which is not even an, a Microsoft tool, you can also connect your data to it, right? So, but in this case, what we need is our SharePoint. So, so I'll select SharePoint because that's where my data is stored and I connect. So once I connect my um, data source, is going to uh, show me the list of my SharePoint sites that I have access to, and then I can select my SharePoint list, which is the expense request that you know we created initially. So I can then select that, and it adds that data source to my um, to my hub. So from there, I can now call the data source from my hub. Either I want to submit to that data source, or I want to pull in information from that data source. Or since my network is really, 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 really okay. So I can see that this is the name of my site, and I can see my list here, expense request, and I can connect. So once I connect, this should now show on my list of my data. So initially, there was no data source attached to this, but now I can see this particular one here now. So which means my data has, has now been. My data source has now been successfully connected to my um, my hub. So one thing we can just quickly do here, so we'll continue from here next week, but one thing I want us to just quickly do is create um, a new blank screen and see, so I think it was Olanike also who asked the question the other time that why do we have to pull it up, start putting all those information manually, right? When we already defined the column names and everything from the data. So we'll see how that uh, plays out now. So here now, we now need to insert a form. So from here, I will insert my edit form. Then I'll connect it to a data. So you can see here, it's telling me to connect to data. So if I select on connect to data, I can select which data I want to connect it to. Right, so I have the different data source. So of course your app can also connect to more than one data source, right? In this case, we have just a single data source, which is our expense re request. So 
I can select this. So once I select this, it should automatically pull in all the different columns that are defined on my lists, which is what just happened here, right? Um, okay, so let me change this to a new form. Uh, yes, so we can see that we have our title feed, we have employee name, customer name, expense type, amounts, currency, and we can see that all of these are showing as drop down, right? The date of expense, the manager name, which are the fields, you know, we already defined on our um, on our SharePoint list. So which means I don't have to start typing in them manually and start inserting the text box and the drop down one after the other. So it just automatically pulls all of those information. So we can see that everything we are defined like, like our uh, for our choice fields automatically shows up here, right? So currency as well, uh, this employee name as well, I can search for different people, right? I can search for people within my organization from here. So I think we'll have to pause because of time from here. I will continue uh, from this point next week. So thank you for listening. I hope this made some sense. Yeah, okay, one last thing is when you are done with your app, once you are done with anything you are doing, or you need to also publish your changes, right? So when you save, um, so you need to try to occasionally save while you're working on your app, so you don't lose your um, the changes. Then publishing now means, okay, I want, want every other person to be able to see the changes I've made. So if I don't publish this, which means I only see the changes within my Power App Studio. So once I publish this, then every other person within the organization would be able to see those uh, changes that I've made. So if I decide to change the color or change anything from here, if I've not published it, I only see that changes, those changes within my app here. So once I publish it, every other person will be able to see it. So because I just made a change, a little change by you know changing the size of this, it's telling me to first save. So once I save, then it's now tells me if I want to publish it so and I can publish that. So let's leave it here for now and we'll continue. So I would like to um, pass. Okay, I think somebody has a question. Yeah, Ayo. Ayo, can you ask a question? Ayo. I am Ide Emmanuel, I think. Yeah, I am Ide Emmanuel. Hello, I am Ide. Mustin Amid raising up his hand. Yeah. I am Ide is now. Okay. Um, Mustin, can you can you ask a question, Mustin? Okay. Thank you very much, um, David. Thank you, Baba, today for what you have taken us through now. So I just want to clarify something. Now for this particular application, we used a SharePoint um, list as our data source. So not if we had used a data bus, would that pose any constraints when we want to connect our data to Power BI? So that's, that's my question basically. Okay. Um, I don't think so. So Power BI, would also connect to a data bus if I'm correct. So of course, like almost um, any data that um, Power Apps can connect to, Power BI or Power Automate could also connect. So because they mostly have um, the same set of connectors, so there is, um, I believe Power BI would also be able to connect to your data if you had used data bus as well. So I don't think there should be any constraint. I think the major um, um constraint that i would say is not in terms of connecting to the data but um with the mostly with the costing so uh data has its own um additional costs right so then if you are using sharepoint then sharepoint doesn't have any other extra cost besides your normal um your normal subscription um monthly subscription that you have. So I think that's just the major difference, really. 
So yeah, in addition to that, you not of course the way he created the data in SharePoint may look a bit different. Some of the names like um, choice field and all those things it may, may look yeah. different in the database. But apart from that, doesn't pose any risks. You would import it the same way to Power BI as your SharePoint list. Um, Olanike, okay. Olanike, your question. Thank you. To you. Good evening. Thank you, Baba, today. Please, my question is this: Now that we've extracted from the uh, SharePoint list to create this on the Power App, um, if we make any changes on the SharePoint list now, are we to make? Are we to create another screen for the correction or for the any changes we make, or make it on? This same power app and the one we've already created on the apps. Okay, good question. Yeah, so when you when you make any changes, like maybe add, uh, you've added additional columns on your list. Like I mentioned, that I, I believe there are six other columns that we are going to be needing, you know, within our app, right? So once we add that uh, column on our SharePoint list, you don't need to create a new screen. In fact, you don't even need to delete this form and reinsert a new form. You can still maintain this your form and then decide to add a new field. So you can see that there is an option here to add field. So you can see the list of the different columns. So some of these are default columns on SharePoint, like the attachments and the likes, right? So let's say, yes, like this attachment column, is also it also comes by default with um, SharePoint. So let me even add that so you see how it works. So let's say we are also going to, we are probably going to need this attachment column on this as well. So the attachment is, okay, let's say I needed to attach an evidence of uh, of your payment. So let's say I I said I want to collect money for um, for my transportation or my feeding or accommodation, right? I probably need to attach a receipt to show that this was truly the amount I spent. So once you've made any changes or added any additional feed on your data source. If you are currently editing your app at that period, all you need to just do is to come here and refresh your data. So once you refresh your data, it will pick the new updates coming from your data source. And you can go ahead to now add that particular field here. So once I edit this and I had the field, it automatically shows up on this form. So you can see that the attachment column that I just added now shows up here. So in, uh, initially it was all this my name. So this attachment that I've added now uh, is added. So once I refresh my data source and I add a new feed, it shows up here automatically. So I don't need to create a new screen. I hope that answers your question. Mm -hmm. Olanika, are we good? Yeah, 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 thank you. Okay, great. So thank you, Baba Tunde. Um, thank you for in Thank you everybody for joining in. Uh, we use like one hour, 22 minutes. But for next Saturday, um, please kindly come in early. If you can come in four o'clock, but actually you just start off and we just continue. That is what we are going to do. Because today is the first time, yeah, we understand the book came in late. But from next week, the about to just pick up from four o'clock. And okay, Smiley, you want to ask a question? Kind of. Uh, not a question, per se. Hey, can you hear me? Please. Okay, we can hear you. Okay. So, uh, my organization is looking for a power apps addict that can work with my team. So, I don't know if you have anyone within the uh, within the call now that is, you know, probably ready to change his uh, job, and then we can take it up from there. So, the person can contact me. Then we have a discussion, discuss about the job goals and the likes. But it's still around power platform. Okay, good. So, Kendi, you know what you would do? You you, oh, you definitely okay. know me, Abby. Uh, I think no, we don't so. know you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so again, okay, what you do is eh? check me out on LinkedIn, eh? David Abu on LinkedIn. Chat me I up. Like funny, like Dallas. Eh? I said I uh, know you like Dallas. Okay, good. <laughs> so chat me, up, chat me up. Then um, we're going to talk to the community. For anybody that is on this call right now, that you have interest in working, you already use Power Apps. Just chat me up on LinkedIn or Twitter or anywhere. I will notify. I will have your name, have your CV. Then I and um, Kendi will take it up from there. Thank you, Kendi. I really, really appreciate this. I really, right, really do. You. Yeah. 
Okay. Please, let's prioritize so, our community members before yeah, going we'll out, outside to yeah. the Twitter. That's the whole yeah. idea of the community. Thank you, Kendi. Exactly. We appreciate it. Exactly. Yeah, so yeah. anybody that is on this call right now, if you know that you're interested, please, I will, we will really need to talk to you for that role. Thank you very much. So thank you very much, everybody. We are going to meet next week, um, four o'clock, the same time, four o'clock to five o'clock. Um, thank you very much for coming in. We appreciate you. Um, and we, are, we love, we have so many news to really give you guys, so many news. But the first news is that we now have a Teams call, and that is where you are seeing currently now. Um, if I share my screen, just five minute announcement, we are done. Um, if you can see my screen now, let me know. Um, Foy, can you see my screen, Foy? Yes, yes, I can. Yes. Okay. Yes, so, yes. so now this is from Microsoft. So currently now, this is us having a meeting right now. This is us having a meeting right now. So this is where we'll be having our meeting every Saturday. And that same link is the same link. We'll be having it here every Saturday and we'll be uploading them on YouTube. So we, today is session one till the end of all the old sessions we'll be having. We'll be uploading them on YouTube. Um, we have um, the different communities. These are the communities worldwide and every program that is being done, we're having it. So they are going to be tracking everything that we do from now to the for like for from now on they'll be tracking them all sorts of stories will be doing them all our speakers so everything will be having them here the the next thing the next stage we'll be getting to is for every community state that we have lagos ibad um or your state edo state just akt we'll be creating a a team for each one of them so we'll be having different teams here for different states so that when we now have the whole general meeting the whole general meeting will be in the nigeria power platform user group why the different states can have their own meetings seamlessly so nobody use their individual account for meetings anymore so you can just come in here we are going to include you and your the leaders and the leaders can include the members from there we are going to grow we are going to grow from there so for now um i am for um foying we are the one in charge of like handing the whole stuff every week and we also have um baba tunde we have a big girl we have some leaders here, Ayodeji. So we are trying to make sure everything go as planned as possible so that everybody is in one umbrella as much and nobody is jumping links every time. So everybody will just be here and you can just have your own team and you join um, from there. You do your meeting and every, everything, we can track it like that. So thank you very much. We'll be sharing more information as we go. Um, thank you, for him. Thank you. Um, thank you, Baba Tunde. Thank you, Charles Ola. Good work you're doing with your community. I you good work with your community. Um, for everybody that is doing a whole lot of stuff in their different communities, we really appreciate you. Uh, um, if you need speakers, let us know. We can always come in and speak in your community event. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, take care and um, good good evening, everybody. Yeah, good evening. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye. Bye.